Hey people, welcome to the Run Testers and have we got a biggie for you here. In this video we're getting our first look at the new Saucony Endorphin Speed 4. Now the Endorphin Speed 3 pretty much set the benchmark for super trainers. It was a big hit amongst the Run Testers. I liked it so much I actually ran across Europe in it and it's fair to say that we have been waiting for this upgrade with bated breath, much anticipation. We were really keen to get these on our feet. Now, just like the Speed 3, the Speed 4 is built for racing and for speedy runs. There are a few changes here, a tweaked nylon plate and some modified uppers, but much of the DNA of the Speed 3 has been retained. Sockney have kept what's working. So is this an upgrade overall? Well, we'll reserve the final judgment on that for our full review, but right now we're here to share our first run impressions of the new Sockney Endorphin Speed. So let's crack into it. First up some quick details then and the Endorphin Speed 4 stack height stays the same with 36 mils in the heel, 28 mils in the forefoot for an 8 mil drop. It weighs in at 8.6 ounces or 245 grams in my UK 8.5 test shoe size. That's ever so slightly heavier than the Speed 3 but we are talking a few grams here. And that puts it among the lightest daily trainers going. It's lighter than the Triumph 21 but slightly heavier than a Mac 5, a Hoka Mac 5 that is. Then on price, the Endorphin Speed 4 comes in at £180 or $170 in the US. Again, we're seeing price hikes here in the UK and this is £15 more expensive than the Speed 3 was here, but the cost stays the same in the US, so uh, lucky you. Let's give you a quick whip round then. The midsole keeps a decent sized stack of Power Run PB, PBAC Super Foam. There's a re engineered winged nylon plate in here to provide some stability, rigidity, and forefoot flexibility to that midsole foam. And the shoe retains Saucony speed roll geometry with a decent rocker shaping that looks to be the same here as the Speed 3 in terms of that overall shape. Inside the shoe, you've got what Saucony calls a super responsive sock liner to add some extra bounce to each stride and a bit more comfort. Up top, You've got zonal mesh. It's about the same structure and sort of density as the Speed 3. And on the whole, it's a light, airy, perforated design. A little bit thicker, maybe. And the heel collars now also add a touch more padding. Not a huge amount, but there's just a little bit more that goes a bit deeper into the shoe. It's still sort of medium padded overall. The thin wrapping tongues of the Speed 3 that are a bit racy have been swapped for a slightly thicker padded tongues, though these tongues seem a bit more flimsy You've still got the gussets here too to heat, to hold them in, but yeah, there, there's a bit of a change there on the tongues. If you flip them over, you've got an updated outsole design here. Now you've got one large lattice design section that's covering up the whole forefoot here. Holds a bit more protection, a bit more grip across the front of the foot. Into the heel, you've got two sections now on the heels. Now these seem to cover more of the key impact zones than they did on the Speed 3. The Speed 3 sort of had a habit of sort of scuffing on the outer edges here, and there's more rubber now to boost the protection there, so hopefully that will fix that problem. The fit of the Endorphin Speed 4 has been good for me. I'd say in my normal running shoe size, I've had some of the issues I had with the Endorphin Speed 3 already after one run, which was just a bit wider than the previous versions of the shoe, and I swam around in it a little bit as someone with a narrow foot, and I got some heel rub in particular. And today, on the run I did in the Endorphin Speed 4, I did get a little bit of an inkling around the heel on my right foot in the same place, uh, but it's not quite as bad. I don't think it's as wide or as loose back there as I found the Endorphin Speed 3, and I didn't really feel like I had too much room in the toe box at all, so I think maybe the fit's come down a little bit in terms of width, but not much. I probably will heel lock it going forward, and that will probably remove the issue entirely, but yeah, I think still not as narrow maybe as the first couple of versions of the shoe, which I did like as some of the narrow foot, but I think in general people prefer the slightly wider fit of the Endorphin Speed range since, and I think the 4 mostly sticks to that. So when it came to fit, I ran in my regular Saucony running shoe size, which is a UK 8.5, and, and I found the fit to be bang on. I got good hold in all the key areas, the heel, the midfoot lockdown. There's a nice roomy, flexy feel to the toe box too, and overall I'd say the fit offers a reliable security without feeling restrictive, really good disappearing comfort on the foot, and I would recommend going through to size in these shoes. The fit for me in the Speed 4, um, now I've never run in the Speed before, I have run in the Endorphin Pro, and I found that in the 3, um, I found that was a, as a bit too short for me, and I almost, almost, um, when these were coming out, asked for half a size up, and I'm glad I didn't, because actually, this, for me, was spot on, I'm a UK size 6, and I found this was, um, fitted me perfectly. I am slightly narrow, um, I did have to cinch those 
laces in quite tight but but they did get a good fit so if you are a bit wider then I think there's there's room there but it fitted fine stayed in place throughout the run had a good amount of wriggle room in the toe and no complaints really I was a bit um concerned when I first put it on as to the the tongue seemed to sit a bit oddly on my foot but actually once I got going there was no issue there um at all so firstly fit quick one on that it's a much plusher shoe and that's reflected in the fit the toe box is a little bit wider i think than the speed three and um this heel collar thicker and also just feels a lot wider i've had to lock down the laces a lot tighter on this one so very roomy i'm still size seven true to size but i wouldn't need to go up one so a little bit bigger i think than something like the speed three Now for my initial first run test, I've actually done three runs. I did a five and a half mile and a four and a half mile at the top end of my easy pace. Two runs with a little 30 minute pause in between them. Those two were so around 90 minutes on feet, almost in a sort of two stints. I also did a half marathon pace training run with some faster strides at the end. I was a huge fan of the Speed 3, so much so that I ran the equivalent of more than 50 consecutive marathons in them across Europe. And what I loved about them so much was that they felt balanced enough to run at almost any pace. They had a disappearing, snappy, lightweight, cushioned ease to them. You got speed, but you also got protection and comfort in one happy shoe. Now for my first runs, I think the Speed 4 still offers that package. There's excellent instant comfort the moment you lace them up. The shoe disappears on the foot really nicely. Now one thing I'm not 100% convinced by is the new style kind of knitted tongues. They feel a bit flimsy and unstructured and I do worry that they might not hold their shape for that long. And also these two kind of stitched in lace tabs also worry me somewhat. I like the kind of fact that the Speed 3 had a no-nonsense kind of lacing setup. These things always feel like they might be open to potential sort of tearing and breaking or kind of ripping off. They might not happen, but it always does make me wonder when I look at those and I just kind of wish the lacing had been sort of left alone. Speaking of lacing, I found that initial step in was really unfussy, easy to get locked in and comfortable. And this is a shoe that I want to run in right from the off the moment that you put them on, they feel good. Now, when you get moving, you can feel there's enough energy from that midsole, lots of spring, bucket loads of protection, but a foam here that cushions the road without sinking too far. This is one of those midsole that returns right when you need it to. So it takes the edge off the road, but it comes back nice and lively right when you want it to give it that kind of lively, punchy feel. One warning, if you need things to be super stable, there is a bit of wobble I find here in the shoe. So that's one thing to consider. But overall, I felt controlled, particularly when you push the, space, the paces up. They respond really well with a light, punchy controlled response when you drop down the pace to an easy cruise there's enough softness and protection underfoot here to also eat those heavier miles as well now i also ran in some wet conditions and i found that this sort of updates to this grip work really well there's good traction here in general they did struggle a bit on wet manhole covers but plenty of shoes do cornering i thought was nicely controlled and i really like the fact there's a lightweight precision here in each step nothing feels too bulky too cumbersome too baggy too big and that's where these definitely have the edge over shoes like the nova blast 4 for me they just feel like a little bit less shoe on the foot a bit more precise a bit more agile and a bit more nimble so yeah my first run test's pretty good but let's get into that in the early verdict so i went out for four miles in this today um i don't know if you can still hear but i've had 10 days off because i've been ill so i was very excited to get out i'm very excited to get out in this today I've never run in the speed before, I've run in the pro, um, found that a little bit too aggressive for me, um, but never run in the speed. So, so what I would usually do, the sort of sessions that this is aimed at, is um, I use the Boston 12 a lot. So that's my comparison. Um, I found it really comfortable to run in actually, more comfortable than the Boston 12. Um, I found it... At first, I was I was a bit unsure about the heel. The heel feels, it looks, you can see it goes out a bit. Um, it felt a bit wide as I was running along. Um, I did get used to it, but and I think actually it felt quite stable because of that, because of that width on under the heel. Um, it does give you a bit of stability there running along. So that was good. It, it did take a little bit getting used to. Um, it was comfortable though, the, the upper is very comfortable and the foam has got some spring in it, uh, the roll there through from the, from the heel to the toe was really nice and it is just 
nice comfortable shoe to run in i know it is um, designed for a bit more than going along a, a, a steady pace but actually if you're thinking about something like a half marathon or a marathon you are going to be at that cruisy pace really um, so it felt good in that in that pace zone which today I was running probably just a little bit slower than my marathon pace um, for those four miles and then picking it up for those strides at the end um, it was it was good it did the job the it was wet today uh, you can probably tell by the it's got a bit got a bit gray there um but the the rubber underneath i didn't i didn't even think about really um the corners or anything like that as i was running along because the the rubber underneath um was nice and grippy and so that was um definite definite plus there for the wet weather was good i would run tempo runs in this um would i run short intervals in it uh I, I need a few more goes really obviously i just did some strides today it will do the job it's not really giving you that that mega oomph as you go but it can go with your faster pace so i'm just heading off to do first run in the socketty endorphin speed four obviously very exciting shoe we've loved the previous three generations of the speed and looking forward to testing out today i've got a steady hour on the plan so that we've done mainly to effort but the kind of runs i do quite a lot in a shoe like the socketty endorphin speed i've done it in both the three two and the one and usually I end up running something around like towards 10 miles in the hour uh, so it'll be a good test of the shoe feels good on the foot so far but let's go and do some running in it Uh, all done a uh, really really enjoyable run out there today gorgeous weather felt really good really smooth uh, logged kind of probably just yeah, just over 10 miles in the hour quite nicely averaging probably around 340 uh, a k something like that and just felt really good in the shoe it feels very much like the speed like right down to a couple of minor details things like i've got a slight bit of heel rub on my right foot which i had with the endorphin speed three and get a little bit of forefoot discomfort on my left side uh which i had again with the previous endorphins i do longer slightly faster run so all around yeah it feels very much like the previous versions of the shoe which is obviously a really good thing i think because it is an amazing shoe it's been a very popular shoe you don't feel the slight extra weight at all on the run i found it felt just as nimble just as smooth really easy to turn the legs over giving you that little bit of benefit from the plate on a run like that you're just trying to sustain an effort and not push too hard so your heart rate's a bit lower than it might be you know if you're just doing it in a classic daily trainer so yeah everything there is really like, like i mentioned i get some slight forefoot discomfort with this which i don't actually get with the pro four or the pro three because they've got that slightly higher forefoot stack and uh, i think that's basically because the way i run i snap through especially on my left side from my heel onto my forefoot and i just get a bit more impact through there it's never really been a big problem with the speed and i've done long runs in it perfectly happily but yeah it's something i noticed a little bit and it's still there with the uh, fourth version of the shoe but for the most part my uh, my first run impression there is that it feels like the speed of old and that's a great thing you know really comfortable really easy to use and uh, i really enjoyed it for that kind of steady run today ahead of a big workout tomorrow which will be in the pro four for so it's good saucony rotation at the moment with the guide on easy runs as well cards on the table i was always going to come to this first run with um you know expecting to love the shoe because the speed three is one of my favorite shoes of all time so i had high expectations for this but the speed four is great you can put it on you know it's a little bit roomier in the heel i noticed that i felt like there was a lot more shoe underfoot then in the speed three, as I was going along, it kind of felt a little bit more bulky, but not, um, you know, not so that it would be an easy day shoe, but I just didn't feel quite as poppy somehow as the speed three, I think. Um, I mean, that said, it's got the same heel toe drop and um, the same speed roll tech. It's got the same power on PB foam, which is great. It's a good reactive, but super light foam. I love it. It works really well um it still felt like a really light shoe as far as kind of the general construction um of the upper and the tongue was concerned so it's definitely it felt like something that was there for the kind of the tempo runs and the workouts and things like that i didn't get that kind of woohoo feeling straight off that i did with the speed three um that sort of felt i thought when i put the speed three on it felt more like a race day shoe and i felt a bit naughty wearing it for workouts um even though it you know it's fine or better than wearing a carbon plate shoe all the time for workouts and, and more cost efficient um so yeah it wasn't quite the love at first sight that i was expecting um but i did really enjoy it and um, just to say though i've done most of my sessions in this shoe on the treadmill so far um so i've got a bit more work to do on the roads um 
but I've I've been kind of on and off the treadmill with them a little bit on the roads and comparing speed three versus three uh, versus four kind of straight after each other. So it's been really interesting. Um, but yeah, as I say, so far, not the golden child, but an excellent shoe from my first run experience. Early verdict is a pretty simple one for me so far. The Endorphin Speed 4 hits all the same great high notes as the Endorphin Speed 3, 2 and 1 did for me so far that is. After that one run, like I say, that one run is something I've done in all the different versions of the shoes and I do in a lot of super trainers and even carbon shoes sometimes. And it just had the same feel that I expect from the Endorphin Speed today. Really smooth, comfortable enough, despite a little bit of forfeit discomfort, but comfortable enough, bit of bounce, bit of speed, easy to run quick in, nice and relaxing when you do the very short warm up and cool down I did today as well. So just, yeah, what I expected from the shoe and I'm pleased to report it's delivering it again. There is that slight weight gain, but it doesn't really affect anything on the run for me. I didn't really notice that on the run. Didn't notice much difference on the outsole or the way the shoe is now built up. It looks a bit different the way it's built up at the heel, but yeah, no real differences. And if that all stays the same throughout the rest of our testing, then it'll be difficult to see why I wouldn't consider it the best super trainer or best all-rounder going because that's how I've always seen the endorphin speed with the previous generations. So yeah, looking forward to doing more running in it. We'll get some more detailed comparisons to other shoes in the full review, but so far it seems uh, so far so good with the speed, same as what you've had before. Just a really, really good accomplished shoe. So early verdict. Um, it's definitely got me wanting to run in it more and I'm thinking ahead to my long runs. Will I go out in this for my long runs? I probably... We'll do, I will do a medium run in this and see how I get on. I, I feel like it will give me that I'm not going to plod round my long run if I've got this on. So I'm definitely intrigued to run in it more. I did like it. Um, and I'm excited to see what will happen when I take it out for a bit more challenging runs as well. So quick early verdict then, well all the first impressions here are positive, excellent instant comfort on the foot, a lively cushion ride that feels light, full of energy without any harshness or fussy business. This is a shoe that immediately feels natural on the foot and I felt at home in these right away. And although I'll reserve judgment for the full review after I've done plenty more testing, I think this has all the hallmarks of an excellent versatile shoe and it's a shoe that I can't wait to get out in and do more miles, that's always a really good sign. It has all the reliable comfort, I think, of a Ride 17, a propulsive ride on steroids that's more like an Endorphin Pro. And from what I've seen so far, there's excellent versatility here like you got with the Speed 3. This is a shoe that you can rock back and cruise easily in, safe in the knowledge that you're nicely protected, but it's also built to perform when you kick up through those gears. Where the midsole rocker and that nylon plate kick in and you get a nice lot of kind of punch from them. Loads of people over on Instagram obviously have asked me if I was running the Danube again, would I choose the Speed 4 over the Speed 3? It's early days, but from what I've seen so far, I think the answer is yes. My initial reaction here is that Socony has tweaked a winning shoe and basically not broken anything really. It's delivered more of the same. And if someone told me I could only buy one shoe to do all of my training and racing for a marathon, this one would certainly be on the shortlist. My overall verdict then is just that um, the shoe is just, as I said, a little bit more chunky somehow. Um, so the official line is there's only like two grams different and the heel toe offset is exactly the same. Now, when I measured my size sevens, there was actually a much bigger difference weight wise. So for me, the speed three was 204 grams, whereas the speed four is 221 grams, which is quite a big change. And to me, it feels like there's a lot more in the shoe. It feels like it's got a bulkier sole. It feels like you're kind of um up high more um but interestingly although i didn't feel like it was an instantly as pacey shoe as the speed three actually my feet say otherwise um so i've actually had um might have got i've got quite a kind of sensitive left sort of under my toe area so if i get a lot of pressure or a lot of force through that i notice it and i get a bit of discomfort and that's something i found with the um endorphin uh, elite range that it was very like pushing you forward onto your toes and that that gave me some discomfort and funnily enough I did notice that with the speed four so obviously although I don't feel like it's as poppy and as racy as the speed three actually it is obviously doing the job so the kind of the feedback from my feet isn't the same as was getting fed back to my brain um and I think yeah I, I mean the outsole is a lot bigger um a lot more coverage on it. I think 
if it still feels to me less of a of a substitute race shoe and more of a fast workout shoe so i think i'll be interested to see you know um once i'm not eight months pregnant and therefore a lot heavier than i normally am and a lot slower than i normally am um whether i can get some kind of better pace workouts and whether that kind of pace injection really lets it fly um not not quite as amazing as i was hoping for as an upgrade to the speed three i think i'd probably still for the price probably just go by the speed three at the moment so there you have it that's been our first run look at the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4. We'll have a full review up on the channel in the coming weeks once we've done some more thorough testing so make sure to hit subscribe and to ring the bell if you want to hear when that full review lands otherwise it's been a pleasure walking you through this brand new shoe and our first thoughts on it. Now if you're looking for a fast training shoe I'm going to pop two videos up on the channel now that you should definitely watch those will be interesting for you otherwise it's been a real pleasure to chat you through the shoe Thanks for watching and we hope to see you again soon on the Run Testers. Happy running everyone.